All right, so today I'm covering another stone. So stone, when they were really were gaining popularity, it was called Arrogant Bastard. They really focus on super intense hoppiness. So super hop heads, if you haven't had stone, get you some stone. But this was a bomber. It was only like six bucks. And it kind of grabbed my attention and I'm learning to jump into IPAs. Like I've, I've gone pretty far where I drank it all the way. It was like, whoa, like what? Wow, wow. So the bitterness can vary. When it's very floral, it's like in the middle of your tongue. When it has other attributes, it goes on the side. When it's more like piney, it kind of divides. When it's grassy, it's like overall. That's the closest I can guide you because I don't know. I'm gonna find out right now how intense this is. So. I'm gonna go ahead and crack it open. And let's see, it has a very um, pine note, so <laughs> the best way to describe it is it reminds you kind of like marijuana, but in a funky, stinky, it's a plant, I don't know what it is, where's that coming from? I'm not saying that it is, and then I smoke there or anything, it's just, I have friends and like this reminds me that something they would do. So I imagine that they might not be big beer drinkers. They might enjoy this. So has yeah, very deep iron almost, but in a plant way. So it feels like cold steel on a good evening with the green cells of a plant, which is sounds crazy. So it's starting to open up. I can get the beer hoppy maltiness because you all beer has to start with malt. That's your base. But when you want hops, you make sure to put something that's gonna not fight it. So the malt's gonna be the color, the darkness, the toastiness will change it. But when you put hops in it is when it gets the green, leafy, money, Smell, it's just crazy. So now it's open, it still has like that very grassy. So when I said the marijuana, it's like grassy. Those are two things, whoever you are, whatever side you're on, that grassy aspect. Like it rained and you cut your grass or right before you cut your grass, it rained. Like it's right there in that middle area. I get the malty, buttery smell, but not the sensation because when it, feels very buttery right here it feels heavier it's very light so that is a rounded tropical no citrus like it has like citrus notes but they're so back here the tropical is like the pineapple the hanging out the the thick in the sun and a very light, light, the bitterness that sticks is very minute. That's uh, the beer bitterness. So the bitterness is designed to counteract the malt sugars. Because I'll tell you, you have to start with a lot of sugar. And you let the, e the yeast eats all of that. And so you're heating up this big old pot. And you throw the hops in there. That way when you go ahead and let it ferment, the sugars don't feel as sweet. If we didn't put any hops in there, uh, like barley wine is a very fun example. That is, whew, that's like dessert on steroids, like dessert and bread on steroids. This is very grassy, like an open plain. Then it finishes with a little bit of pininess, just a little bit of bitterness, and you're having a good time. It's like, tropical Christmas, <laughs> I guess, is the best way to describe it. So overall, all the things I said, it's to help you get included. I'm not excluding anybody. I want everybody, if you're a beer kind of sort, beer curious, beer, I had it before. I'm just trying to guide you into like the best area to describe your IPA. So there's a scorpion bowl which is a very good name because the scorpion is it stings you from the front to the back. So instead of getting all the front, it, everything's at the end. And it's an IPA. 
it ain't lying. So you're looking at 7.5 percent alcohol by volume. This would be equal to a pint and six fluid ounces, 22 ounces. So one cup is eight, a pint is double cups. So two cups is 16, uh, 16. Yeah, 23, 24, yeah, right around there. This is, qualifies as a bomber. I'm not saying I'm gonna imagine anything, but this qualifies as the beginning of a bomber. And a bomber starts at like 22, and 750 is a wine version or champagne version, either one, sparkling wine, whatever. So these can be as big. When you see 750, it's bigger than this. 22 is the beginning, 24 is the next, and I don't think I see anything between that, and then you hit 750. 750 is for the liquor. So if you're paying uh, 15 to 20 dollars and it's bigger than the 22, you're doing good. If it's 15 and under, that's when the 22 bombers kind of like vary. There seems to be a sweet spot for 22 ounces. That's this one, and I'm not gonna complain because you pay six bucks, and it's usually a higher volume of alcohol, unless you're doing like Bud Light, Budweiser, all the regular stuff, and then you're kind of you're in the same zone, but you might as well get good beer that like is gonna give you something to enjoy and a buzz, and that's when you just pay that extra fifty cents. So that's my advice: learn it, start studying it. It will benefit you. And the flavor's there. The flavor never goes away. The flavor's always amazing. That's the only reason I'm animate to bring it to you and help you and want you to grasp it. So uh, just like, share, subscribe. I'm sorry it's late. I hung out with some friends. But I'm gonna try and keep up more and more but there's so many beers and I'm doing the best I can. So in the meantime, the ones I do have that you can relate to and talk about, hopefully they help guide you to see where you're at. If you're a pale L person, uh, Indian Pillow person, which is more extreme, just a lager lover, which Skull Mechanics has shown me, a lager lover can go a long way. Don't let anybody tell you any different. So other than that, be safe and enjoy yourself, and I'll catch you as soon as possible.